Hey, what up fellas? Today, we're going in for some multi-species fishing. We're going for everything. And that's why we've got the live shrimp ready to go. Now, what I'm looking for with these guys is definitely some redfish, maybe some speckled trout. We also came prepared for some bull reds and maybe even some big uglies with this guy right here. But definitely, we need to catch at least one red. We got to do a little taste test. All right, step one, upwind. Cut the engine. And now, we drift a little bit, hopefully, right into some fish, which we can ambush. Might as well send a shrimp out there to the left while we're drifting in. I really hope we're drifting into them. If not, we're gonna be sticking around, just waiting for them to show up. There should be reds cruising around, maybe some drum. If we stay in one spot, one decent spot, they should be coming to us as well. Phase two, dropped anchor, quietly. Ooh, it was pretty shallow. So a lot of people are really upset with me because of one thing. I put redfish at sea tier in the unseasoned fish tier list. The whole goal of today is to catch some keeper redfish, to cook them up and see if it was a fluke. Oh, there's a buddy. There's a guy. Hook up. Is he on? Or did we drop him? No, oh, he's on there. I told you, fellas. We're gonna slide into these guys. This is feeling like a small one, but it's still a guy. You better hope he's real small, or else he's going on the stringer. It is real small. LG. These are the guys we're after. Hopefully there's a couple a little bit bigger than this guy. Woo. If there's one of these guys, there's got to be more. Yeah. Bite, bite. That might have been a bait sealer, though. That felt like a bait sealer bite. Oh no, he's on there. That ain't no bait sealer. <laughs> Unless you consider these small reds bait sealers, which you might. I think this is, ah, uh, let's see what we got. Another one, maybe even smaller. Uh, maybe you would consider that a bait sealer. And this one's getting bit too, my gosh. Get this guy off the hook. We're surrounded, fellas. Get off the hook, big dog. Now see if this, oh, that one's still on. Yes, sir. We're surrounded, my gosh. Oh, dude, that's, that's a drum, little drum. Another one of those guys we were looking for. Wow. Dang. I wonder if he was fighting better than those other reds, even though he's not that big. Woohoo. Thing about drum versus those redfish, they have those much taller bodies that they can use to fight with. So even though that guy's not that big, he still was able to fight a little bit. This guy might even be a keeper, to be honest with you, even though he's that, that small. I mean, he is easily over 15, 15 and a half. First keeper of the day though, we'll let him go. Don't tell him I'm here, big fella. You guys didn't think the plan would work, but man, we might be surrounded by fish. All right, man, let's get a little resetter. This time we drifted in a little bit shallow. Now I think we're gonna stay out a little bit deeper, see if there's any bigger fish out there. The reason I like to use the whole crab instead of using a half or a quarter, it's not that a giant fish won't eat a half or a quarter. It's just when you start breaking it down into halves and quarters, it gives a lot of spots for the bait fish to get in there and steal all the meat. Woohoo! Catch us a big one, man. I'm just gonna let this guy out there and marinate. If there's any fish within 100 yards, they're gonna smell this guy and wanna come get him. Oh, there's a guy. Something was on, man. That's crazy. I thought I saw something going on with the rod. This is on the cork. I was just gonna reel it in and check the bait, see if there's still shrimp on it. Turns out there's a fish. What is it though? Oh, it's a freaking flat boy. What? That's crazy, dude. No way, it's LG. I was gonna say it might be the first flat boy on a cork, but I think I might have got one on the popping cork before. Woo! They'll definitely come up and get it, no doubt. Cool. What a cool fish, man. You know, at the beginning of this trip, I listed out a lot of different fish we could catch. I didn't even mention this guy, but wow. What a freaking cool fish, man. Don't be mistaken, though. He will get you. Hopefully this guy turns into a big guy later on. Let's give him an easy release. See what he does. Woohoo! He shot out of there. 
awesome, dude. That's exactly why we're bringing this shrimp right here. It's not to catch more speckled trout or redfish or catch them more easily. It's just so we can catch those different species that don't want to hit lures. Black drum, sheep's head, you can occasionally catch them on lures, but you want a much better chance, you bring some shrimp. What in the world? What? You know what this is, my boys? You know exactly what this is, don't you? I couldn't tell if it was a fish or not. And that's because it's one of these suckers. The wrong kind of flat boy. Oh no, he's good. Get out of here. Don't bite another one of my baits, big fella. There's a little bite. Little being the main word, but. Yeah, it is. Wow. He was on the whole time. That's a red. I think. <laughs> we'll have to see. Man, he was on the whole time. He just had a lot of slack. Might even have been in the weeds. This might be the first decent guy. Not even. He has the biggest one so far, by far. Woohoo! That's a red. That's a keeper, boys. That's a keeper. That's a spotty guy, too. He wanted that shrimp. Don't lose him now, Coop. Finally, more, more of the guy we're looking for. Still an LG, kind of. About a 21 incher, but he did get it hooked deep, so we'll be putting this guy on the stringer. And I think there's gonna be more of them out there. You know, usually, I'm on the monster redfish. But lately, I've been on these lower slots, which you can't really complain about them, but not always what you're looking for. So far, it's been a little bit of a tougher day, so I'm happy to string that guy up. Wouldn't even mind releasing him, but he did get it deep, so we'll keep him. Oh, there's a guy. Nice. Hook up. Oh, yeah. Not an LG. It's a big LG, if anything. But luckily, it's not one of those 13 inchers. This guy hit it after maybe 30 seconds in the water. There might be a lot. We might have finally found the area. It's gonna say which one's gonna get hit first, the cork or the bottom rig, but right when I threw out the cork, the bottom rig got hit. There's another 20-21 right there. Oh man! Oh, is he on my line? No, we're good, we're good. Dang. All right, we're gonna have to... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Woo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. Another guy, wow. Check it out, the last one had like crazy, not crazy spots, but he had three or four spots on each side. This guy has one. And he has a bite out of his tail, it looks like, as well. Yes, sir. There's a few guys out here, man. And this guy is also going on the stringer. Got two strung up already. I say already, but we've been fishing for a little bit. It's just right in this spot. Finally got to this different spot. And we finally found some keeper sized fish. Sometimes, man, it's that kind of day where you, you kind of have to keep trying spot after spot after spot until you finally find them. Jeez, it's a beautiful day, huh? There's a bite. There's some something going for it. I'm telling you, these bites are just so subtle. I guess I'm lying. Nope, he was on the whole time. That, that, dude, is that not crazy? That, where's my other? My cork might be under right now. But dude, I, just the barely anything on the rod tip. And then there's a fish on. It's like they're eating it and then they're kind of just, they just keep going. I guess that's what they do to shrimp. I mean, not much of a fight. <laughs> not much of a fight to eat a shrimp. Woohoo! They're just eating these shrimp, man, and, and just going about their day, even though it's got a hook on it. Unfortunately, that means they're getting it deep. And there's another one. My gosh. Let that guy go see if the other fish is still on there. And this is exactly why I don't like to keep my full limit of redfish. If I'm going to keep them, I'll keep two, 
And then you always have that third one. In case you do hook a fish deep, you can still keep it. Almost forgot about these guys. In the redfish version of Catch and Cook Unseasoned, the video series where we catch every single fish and cook them up raw to see which one is actually the best tasting, the redfish was the worst tasting fish so far. It came out a little bit fishy, so I had to put it in the C tier. And you know what? That made a lot of the redfish lovers kind of mad at me. Got our beautiful redfish filet that we caught right here and we tried to remove as much of that bloodline as possible to give it a fair shot at the tier list. Always feels a little bit weird putting on unseasoned fish, but we got to do it for science. Only about 30 seconds on there and you can already see it starting to widen up even, even on the top side. Final unseasoned redfish taste test. Don't ask me to do it again. The fish always looks a little bit grim with no seasonings on there and it's hard having this unseasoned fish to not add anything. Like right off the rib, you just want to add something to it. Can the redfish rank up from the C tier? The last time it was a little bit fishy and that could have just been that particular fish. So let's give it a taste test. Hmm. Nice and flaky, nice and flaky. Hmm. Off the rip. No fishiness. I'm not even, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Man, okay. The haters might have been right. It, it's not bad at all, man. No fishiness like I had last time. But I will say, unlike the mango snapper and the trout, it doesn't have an immediately good flavor. It's more of a neutral flavor. It's not immediately good, it's not immediately bad, but if you did add some seasonings on there, some butter, some lemon, it's gonna be amazing. So it will be moving up to the B tier. Uh, you know, Again, you guys were right. I'm glad you guys made me redo it. I love you guys very much. Be safe. We'll see you guys next time. Holy cow. Oh my.